Hi everyone, uh, my name is Malvika Sharan and I will be talking about building a culture of collaboration in open source communities. I will give examples from my work as a community manager of the Turing Way. The Turing Way is an open source project that involves and supports its diverse community in making data science reproducible, ethical, collaborative, and inclusive for everyone. We believe that to make our project truly beneficial and comprehensible, we need to collaborate with people with diverse skills, backgrounds, and domain knowledge. This project is a part of the Alan Turing Institute, which is the National Institute for Data Science and Artificial Intelligence in the UK. The Turing Way is developed under the research program called Tools, Practices, and Systems. And the goal of this program includes providing trustworthy system, transparent reporting, inclusive interoperable design, ethical integrity, respectful co-creation, and leadership in open research. The Turing Way sits across most of these goals and provides a central resource for good practices to all our researchers within the UK and internationally. It was started by Kirsty Whitaker as a book on reproducibility. Shared as a lightly opinionated guide, this book provides reproducible tools and practices to help ensure that the PhD students, postdocs, BI, funding teams, and all other stakeholders know what is their responsibility of reproducibility, where they can make impact and how they can make their work more efficient and understandable. Reproducibility is when the same analysis is applied to the same data set, it should give same result. It is quite simple to define, but involves making, making complex decisions at every step of the way. So it starts right at the research idea. You want to communicate with others the plan and the design that you have in mind. Then you describe your protocol, collect data sets. You start processing and wrangling your data, conduct your studies and analysis, publish your work and other research components so everyone can access it. Then comes archiving the data to ensure that your data is reusable, meaning that someone else can go through this whole process of reproducing and building upon your work. That's quite an overwhelming process. Moreover, it does not just involve data practices, but also includes the way we communicate our work with other, how we design our project, how efficiently we collaborate with each other. All these while ensuring that we maintain highest ethical standards and research integ integrity in our research. So in order to accommodate all these requirements in research in data science, the project expanded to include four more, four more guides. In addition to the guide on reproducible research, we have guide on project design, communication, collaboration, and ethical research. And we also record all the community practices that we are building and practicing within the Turing Way in our community handbook. We have seen our project and community grow in the last two years. We currently host over 134 subchapters across five guides. In order to ensure that our community members are able to participate, irrespective of their previous experiences of working with open source community, we provide the resources, guidance, templates, trainings, and pathways that they can use to stay involved in the community. We have over 250 direct contributors on uh, GitHub and over 1,000s of thousands of users. For example, uh, we have a set of illustrations that I have intensively used in my talk today, have been downloaded over 4,000 times. We have 500 subscribers of our newsletter, over 1,600 Twitter followers, and about 150 people who participate on a day-to-day -day conversation. So for a community that started at a grassroots level, we are very grateful that these members work with us. So to, to summarize the Turing Way book or project, it's a book, but it's a community where people come together to collaborate and write chapters, build and maintain resources, share their skills and ideas around best practices in data science and research. We apply open source principle in the development and maintenance of the book. Finally, it's built on the culture of collaboration, which is the process and the backbone of our project. So that was about the Turing way. Next, I will be sharing practices, examples, and insights from this project to further discuss how we can promote a culture of collaboration in open source communities. Let's look at three areas of challenges that I will explore in my talk. Open source communities, 
community members, and building collaboration among the members. Let's start by defining what open source community means. An open source community refers to collaborative efforts in an open source software or resource development that anyone can join. They can collaborate to determine direction and goals, and the result will be made available under a free license. In my opinion, there are a lot of assumptions there that anyone can join, that things will happen collaboratively, and that all the outputs will be made available. These are expectations that we cannot ensure that they will happen. Before we come back to discussing this issue in detail, let's see who the members are. These people share common goals and values in the project, such as intent to develop the software or resource, but they come from diverse backgrounds and come with different expectations. A project can have an overarching vision, but each member who joined the project have personal purpose. These visions and purpose leads them to support the open source movement. As a result, they collaborate in the open source community and they also experience different challenges based on their personal needs, skills, and backgrounds. Uh, they will also face lots of barriers in participation. So we saw two sets of challenge. So we know that there are assumptions in open source community definition and there are barriers that each member face. The third component of my talk is building collaboration, which is the valuable for working towards open source communities and project and also to meet our personal goals. I will explain this part in levels of importance. The central of all the work that we do is the product that could be a software or a resource. Then maintaining highest level of scientific integrity, such as reproducibility, accessibility, ethical standards that make our work more reliable and useful for our users. Now the third level is the collaborative work, which is very much required for the development and sustainability of a community where most time and resources are invested. This level includes development, testing, documenting, sharing, archiving, and promoting the project. The fourth level of collaboration is by members who might not have been originally involved in designing the project, but they want to participate. They require support in getting onboarded in the project. They would like to know what tasks they can do, what kind of training could help them fill any gap they may have. And in the best case scenario, they can receive mentoring to actually become part of this process and take on meaningful roles. This will require existing members to welcome them, review their work, and provide good feedback. Often, this is the level where work starts to increase for people in open source. Often, these people are working as volunteers. They are working beyond their day job. But also, this is the part which is very crucial. It's crucial to ensure that we are proactively promoting inclusive approaches to welcome diverse ideas from different skill sets. We do not want to exclude people unintentionally by not providing the support that they need to become part of this community. Finally comes the level, which is often hidden, which is the reason why it's written in small font, but also there are just too many of those hidden works. These are tasks that goes into developing inclusive culture, maintaining communication, having interaction that are positive for people, providing guidelines, making sure that there is diversity in terms of representation and ideas, ensure that we have pathways for onboarding and also offboarding, find funding, maintain transparency, have a governance, publish reports, incentivize people, help build opportunities for connection, and make sure that people are not burnt out while we embed accessibility in all the pathway. Uh, and also, please insert anything that often stay hidden in open source and deserves more recognition. This is also where most work around community building happens. And that's where I want to focus the rest of my talk, exploring the challenges that we have just discussed. In order to make collaboration successful and effective among open source community members, we need to first understand and accept that open by default is not inclusive, or accessible or community-led. By definition, we saw that open source community only means that people are collaborating to build something to make them available online. And honestly, that is not enough. We need to bring people in. 
If we want these aspects to become part of the process, we need to intentionally design our project to make people a part of the development process. The human-centered design approach to make sure that we move from open to inclusive practices in community, which is accessible for everyone and where everyone contributes in a way that we count them. Community building is a process of granting access to skill and support and individual or group needs to participate in a community and influence decision-making process. The key to intentional community building is to have more people involved in the decision-making process. This means that diverse contributors are given opportunities to come into the project with different perspective, participate in the development process, and integrate their combined values in the product by design. Only such a product will truly, truly be relatable, useful, and beneficial for diverse users. The end goal of building a community through collaboration is to distribute power equally throughout the community. So the decision-making is not conducted by one person with most power that can be detrimental to most people in the community who may not get their voices heard. As a community builder, I spend most of my career thinking about the development of practices around building inclusive communities. And there are five points that I want to share with you today. Lesson one, design for inclusion, because inclusion shouldn't be an afterthought. We can use open leadership principles for that, open leadership principle for the de design in Mozilla Foundation, and they, are a set of practices and skills people can use in projects that allows them to collaborate within an inclusive communities. There are three simple rules of open leadership. First, understanding, so that your work is clear, authentic, and widely accessible. Sharing, so that your work can be adapted, re reproduced, and built upon by others. And third is participation and inclusion, so that we create a sense of shared ownership that inspires contributions. In the Turing way, every little contribution counts. We foster a culture of collaboration by ensuring that the collaboration is not defined just by the common goals, the product of the team, or what kind of knowledge they're exchanging on the top level. But we also take time to make sure that people are given the inclusive workspace that they need to perform their best, that they treat each other kindly, abide by code of conduct, know what roles they can have, and contribute to building diverse teams by explicitly opening ideas for contribution. In all our work, we apply open leadership principles. We also define pathways for contribution that always require multiple people to support each other. For example, people are invited to develop and share resources within the Turing way. We support people by mentored contribution, where an experienced contributor reviews the contributions made by new contributors. We also create opportunities for people to maintain and improve resources. So high level maintenance and improvements are very important, but equally important are to invite new members to help in smaller tasks. This could be fixing a broken link or fixing a bug or updating an outdated resource. These are listed as issue for first time contributors with uh, good first issue labels uh, that can be identified by relatively new contributors. They can help fix these. So fixing bugs or broken links may not be the real purpose of our contributors, but these allow them to build confidence in contributing to a new project. People who share our resources more widely are also our contributors as they communicate our work often writing blogs, giving conference, conference talk on behalf of the community. Then there are people who are more interested in reviewing and updating existing resources, which is extremely valuable, especially in data science and research where methods and practices are rapidly evolving. And then we have also a group of contributors who are translating the book into languages to make it truly global so more people can read and understand them. We have currently three languages where most of the contributions are happening. Uh, these are Spanish, Chinese, and French. Finally, we are building a resource where people are encouraged to share best practices. It doesn't mean that they need to write everything that already exists on the internet, but they can come and highlight their own resources in the book so that others can use them. The second lesson is to develop guidelines 
because no one can read your mind yet. Social norms drive behavior and affect community culture. To avoid any detrimental impact of unwritten rule, we need to transparently communicate them with the community. I think one of the biggest barriers a new person can experience when entering a project is, to, is not knowing what the rules and expectations are, where they can participate and how they can contribute. All this can be very discouraging for someone who is new to the project. And that's why documenting them is very, very important. So define those unlabeled doors. Tell where people can go, label issues and pull requests, describe how people can participate, what tools will be required, what kind of support do they have, and what kind of roles and rewards are in place. The minimum requirement for a repository that even GitHub prompts you to do when uh, you go to the insights and the community project is to add a readme page, define how people can contribute, and what is the code of conduct. Make it as detailed as possible. In the Turing way, we also have a list of contributors. And these are people who have contributed and would like to have their contributors documented in detail. We have also carefully developed a community handbook. This has chapter that describes how to enter the project. We also have guidelines for supporting the development of chapters, maintaining consistency. Provide, we provide chapter templates and workflows so nobody has to start from the scratch. We describe other community practices, like how they can meet with each other, how they can receive reports, how they can get involved in asynchronous uh, collaboration. And we also have, of course, GitHub issues and bugs that are tagged for new users. The third lesson is foster a sense of ownership because communities are not built on one person's opinion. We avoid individual authorship in the favor of establishing shared ownership and agency in the project. The project belongs to the community and is always a work in progress. All our contributions are facilitated through GitHub. Most of our conversation happens there online, transparently via issues and pull requests. All these places for us are places to invite people to join in and share the discussion ideas. We use all contributors bot. It's a very simple to install easy bot, but which allows you to recognize contributor contributions by contributors who don't really push code on GitHub. They might be people who join a discussion, for example, this one where Martina and Batul were installing a hypothesis web annotation for the book, but they had had a previous discussion with two people, Laura and Samuel, and on the way they received this support from you. So even though these two are the persons who are doing pushes. There are three other people who were involved in the process who were given the credit for this work. This is also for me an evidence of inclusive practices and kind of culture we want to develop in the project. Since the Turing Way is an online project, uh, we want to ensure that people have opportunities to meet with each other and build connection. We host co-working calls every week and collaboration cafes bi-weekly. We also hosted Book Dash, which is a sprint-like event. So co-working collaboration cafes are online, quiet co-working time where people meet online and work together. But uh, Book Dashes are a longer version of that, where people synchronously from all around the world contribute to similar topics uh, at the same time. So the last one we had was virtual. And honestly, that was the most diverse and inclusive team that we had, because of course, people could not have attended a lot of in-person events. So we had ideas and conversation that wouldn't have otherwise happened. Martina is one of our core contributors uh, who has been part of the community for a long time and attends co-working calls. And she says that it is quite useful for people who may be intimidated to work in a new community with new people. And these conversations are quite crucial for staying motivated. We also want to create opportunities for people to learn from what has happened in the past and this has been also recorded quite uh, thoroughly. We provide detailed guidance to ensure that the best practices are maintained throughout the book consistently. But we share them with a the caveat that these are recommendations and we welcome new approaches of working. Paul was the one who was involved in that uh, building of a consistency project. He was our Google Season of Doc intern, and it was the first time he was contributing to open source. 
And he found the experience of working in open source quite rewarding because he realized that the work is not in the amount of work he does, but how he enable other people. The fourth reason, uh, fourth lesson is recognize all contributions because we want to incentivize collaboration and promote diversity. We do not recognize, if we do not recognize all contribution, we will end up disproportionately ignoring the hidden labor that a lot of people do. And especially those who are quite new to the tech community. Often those people are members of marginalized group who have historically been excluded from open source and tech spaces. In the Turing way, we recognize all contribution. First of all, as mentioned, we use all contributors bot that records all the contribution directly on pull request and GitHubs. But we also provide dedicated page in the book for the contributors to write what they think is meaningful for them to highlight their work. They share how they can, uh, how one person can meet them, how they can collaborate with them, and what they have worked on. So for example, we have a uh, Batul's uh, page. So everyone gets their dedicated link. So this can be used, for example, someone wants to build a new skill, such as working with version control or building community. They can choose to work on specific tasks that matches their interest. They can then update their page describing how they achieved those skill, which is an evidence for them that can become part of their CV. In order to create opportunities for people to come into the project and highlight their work, we want to meet them where they are. So uh, if you're new to the community, join the community. You can learn a new skill. You can share a new skill. You can collaborate with other, mentor other, and represent this community. And we will value your participation in any form. Our moonshot goal is to make reproducibility too easy not to do. And that can happen when we can make system and structure level changes, influencing research and policy at national and international level. Some of the notable impact we had in 2020 with the support of our contributors was that the project was highlighted in EU report for reproducibility. A policy by mayor of London on emerging technology charter was used uh, by, you, was created using the Turing Way uh, as an open and inclusive project. A funding call from UKRA referenced the project as an example of data science culture. Uh, community trainings like code refinery and data uh, and library carpentries have referenced the Turing Way and the work has been cited in multiple papers. So let's re recap. There are four lessons that I have shared, shared so far for culture of collaboration. Design for inclusion, because inclusion cannot be an afterthought. Develop guidelines, because we can't read your mind yet. Foster a sense of ownership, because strong communities are not built on one person's opinion. Recognize all contributions, because we want to incentivize collaboration and promote diversity. There's a lot more to community building that I'm not discussing today, but there is one more thing that I want to mention. Invest in community building. If you have funding to hire a community manager or more community managers, please do. If you don't, find other ways to reward and support volunteers who are doing these jobs. Community building is a full-time job and it is important to facilitate a culture of collaboration. Volunteers are often overworked and possibly burnt out. We cannot put these hidden and often emotional labor on them. Therefore, it makes a huge difference to have someone working full-time in identifying what people's needs are how we can make it easy for them to participate. It is probably a very selfish uh, pitch because I enjoy my work as a community building and I find it quite valuable in create clearing hurdle to enable people to do what they do best with the skills that they have. So to summarize my talk, building a culture of collaboration in a community, open source or otherwise requires a lot of care and nurturing. It cannot just happen. We need to be purposeful in integrating values we want to build. With that, I'd like to thank all the contributors and members of the Turing Way. Thanks to Kirsty for starting this project. All our resources are online. Uh, if you are interested to join our next book dash or find any updates, uh, you can subscribe to the newsletter. Before I leave, I want to give a shout out to Sarah Gibson, who is giving a workshop on Binder. Uh, which is free you're welcome to join it's offered by software sustainability institute i'm happy to take any question thank you
yeah, I just want to say thank you so much for that um, presentation. It was really good. Um, I thought there were some really interesting points in there. I, I maybe it's uh, an obvious one, but I, I just like the idea of um, intentional designing. Um, that you know these uh, um, uh, open source projects aren't inclusive by default, and that you know we have to think about them from the very beginning and all the way through. I think that's um, a very important point. Um, if anyone has any questions, um, please drop them into the chat um, and I will ask them for you. Um, while people while... are typing, I just wanted to say that, th that my talk is online. I'll drop a link to the PDF and I'm sorry I couldn't provide the transcription, but I have a transcription that I will also just share uh, in online as a Synodal link. What advice would you give to um, organizations or groups um, if they uh, can't afford to um, hire someone as a, a full-time community developer or manager, how, how would you um, advise them to go forward? I um, think, so, yeah, no, it's a, it's a great, great uh, question. And it's a huge problem in most of the communities. I, one of the projects that you had mentioned that I'm also part of, which is open life science, where we train people how to lead their communities. And the problem with that training, it, it's great, but we also have to tell our people that volunteer tasks shouldn't be always free, that we need to actually find f money to support these people. But if we can't find money, I think we can invest in their skill building. We need to identify tasks which are not really big. Can we break down community building into smaller tasks? Can we involve instead of one person who's probably not sleeping well doing all these tasks. So I think just bringing those, you know, human aspect is very important that mm -hmm. someone is taking responsibility. Um, if the if the projects are running for free, um, I, I am quite sad that's the case because that's truly the case worldwide. But there are funding uh, options that are often available and com communicating with the communities, for example, um, Sloan Moore Foundation or Bill, Bill and Melinda Gate Foundation, Welcome mm -hmm. Trust. These are some places where uh, funding can be available. But also a part, uh, there's one uh, community, it's called Open Bioinformatics Foundation. We are at the moment trying to launch a grassroots level community support funding, which mm -hmm. is not a lot of money. It gives about $1,000. It's not a lot, but it at mm -hmm. least help people with infrastructure costs, like you know having a Zoom account or setting a, a communication platform. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, funding is not the answer, but I do think involving more people in these emotional labor is, is the answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess that um, fits with um, what you were talking about, this uh, hidden labor as well. Like uh, maybe if if the hidden labor is made more visible, then um, people can keep an eye on how it's being done and who's doing it and making sure it doesn't all fall to the same person. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, another shout out to this uh, new project called Hidden Ref. Uh, hidden ref is a alternative of ref which is probably very uk centric where people recognize a research uh, contribution mm -hmm. hidden ref is everything behind the research contribution uh, the the recent addition that they had is called lived experience in research where people use people's lived experience to build communities or project but they don't get recognition for all the investment that they do so i think that's uh, something to look out for